We might not be able to get out much at the moment, but I'm lucky enough to have a garden. So I thought today it would spend a few minutes walking around my garden and just seeing what kind of wildlife we can find. There's plenty about. We'll start off with this aphid. This small green bug feeds on the sap of plants. In the UK there are over 500 species of aphid. These guys will come in handy when my tadpoles eventually turn into frogs. The aphids are pretty much at the bottom of the food chain here in the garden and there are multiple predators. This is evidence of a parasitic wasp. It's called an aphid mummy and is the remains of an aphid that was parasitized by a wasp. The wasp larvae eats the aphid from the inside and then hatch out of its body, leaving behind the swollen, golden body. It's not just wasps the aphids need to worry about. Hoverflies are voracious aphid predators. They lay their eggs near populations of aphids, like this one is doing here. When they hatch out, they look like this in their larval stage. They can eat 50 aphids per day. Another predator of aphids is this ladybird. The ladybird is a colourful beetle that almost everyone loves, even those who don't normally like bugs. This ladybird that's hiding in this nettle leaf, I think is a 22 spot ladybird, but it's tricky to tell. This tiny spider has caught an aphid in its web. Although it's small now, this spider will grow to be quite large, at least as far as UK spiders go. I think it's a common garden spider. The young, like this one, emerge in spring and will become adult by June. The nettles have a large diversity of life within its stinging leaves. These nursery web spiders don't actually spin webs to catch their prey, they are fast moving hunters that overpower their prey. The females however do spin a silken sack which she carries around her eggs in. Moving away from predatory invertebrates for a moment, I spotted this common green shield bug. Once only found in southern England, they have been moving north as a consequence of climate change. They are herbivores and this adult will have overwintered and emerged in the spring. They lay eggs on the underside of leaves which will hatch in June. This surprise but welcome visitor to the nettle patch is a damselfly. I'm guessing it's an immature female common blue based on its markings. They are one of the most common damselflies in the UK and can be seen flying from April to October. The last of the nettle inhabitants is this earwig which can be seen hiding within the curl of this nettle leaf. They are normally nocturnal and seek out places to hide during the day. They mainly eat vegetation but will eat carrion and other insects. They do have wings but they don't fly much. Let's leave the nettles now to look at a rather attractive hairy caterpillar. This is the larva of the brown tail moth. They have been completely destroying my apple tree sapling I planted last year but in my garden all wildlife is welcome, even these. Just don't go touching them. Their hairs can cause a nasty and painful rash and even breathing difficulties. One to be admired from a safe distance. Hopefully later in the year I'll have a video dedicated to this moth as I've been following its development since the eggs were laid. Of course there's often birds in the garden, but if you want to know more about them, check out last week's video where I look at some common bird visitors to the garden. Flies of course are very common, like this green bottle fly. The larvae eat carrion, but the adults have a more varied diets including meat, faeces, pollen and nectar, meaning they are important pollinators as well as agents of decomposition. 
The longer you spend looking, the more you can find. Nature is amazing, but unfortunately that's all the time I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know by leaving a like and a comment and subscribe for more videos like this one. Thank you very much for watching, I really do appreciate it, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.